can you hear me team i've joined from a different machine all right great so we'll get started in a minute team i'm just trying to make sure that if is anyone able to join in or not there any questions 30 seconds we're getting started team we'll do a short one half an hour session but we'll do it full flow okay All right, team, welcome back. Day three for our Selenium um, ID to begin with. And then we know we're getting on to Catalan and Enyot and other tools. What does Selenium ID still continue to do? That is what we're going to figure out. This is going to be a shorter session for day three team, but very much focused in terms of how we identify these elements. So our whole purpose team is when we have done automation, and when we have put things together, oopsie, how do I unopen, reopen? Actually, that's fine. I'll just go to anyart.com slash orange. I was trying to bring something down. Not you. Okay, there we go. And uh, Selenium ID. So I'm going to quickly launch this. So um, I have an open and existing project and uh, let's go to where did we put everything? Documents. No, I don't think we did it here. Did I put everything in a desktop? Ding, 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 ding. I think there was a folder on the desktop that I created. Cell versus there we go and that is where we have everything so again open the existing project uh, desktop this was the folder and we have two of them in fact okay so the two of them and we're looking at the latest one so here is my test case with a few steps and we in fact uh, worked a little bit more on the new version 23.7 so i'm going to take this um it's still 23.6 what do i how do i open a new one 23.7 lot of bugs that may still exist within selenium id itself team c i'm on 23.6 i'm trying to open a different project and it is not letting me so open project 23.7 and say open it should change here right it is not and team please don't be alarmed or worried if you see selenium itself having issues it's not the first time they've been having these small issues from the beginning all right so the core has been in terms of web driver components nothing else team Selenium ID relaunching open an existing project and then seven say open See if you notice I had to close and reopen the entire application team. It still opens 23.6. That is pathetic Pathetic as to what it is doing. Why would it do that? All right, I don't know why it's doing a team the reason is very simple. I remember there were a few steps were there see username password repeating from 14 we reduced it nicely to something else don't know where they are right now so anyways it should still work not that they wouldn't but they would have it's not the perfect one that we saved why don't we go here and try and open this open with does it give an option to open with selenium ide no, it doesn't have anything. Maybe with <sighs> no. What if I drag drop this here? Gee. How stupid can this tool be that uh, it doesn't open? And team, very honestly, I'm not a big fan of Selenium ID or Catalan or other tools because they're great to begin with. They're not long lasting the only reason we primarily try and learn or master them is so that um, we 
learn how we get into the more complex automation side in the framework section all right so this is something that is pretty much easy i'm still unable to load 23.7 do not know why okay it could be a product fault but however i'm not too worried about it i'm more interested in as to what is it that we're doing here so team we have three specific things that we were working on earlier remember our command target and value all right so we're going to focus on target team then try and identify them so in the previous session what we were doing is if i start from the beginning day one we did a few day two is where we were going integrated development environment um, eclipse is popular for java developers for selenium ide it is just at the very basic record and run all right so you wouldn't see a lot of uh, selenium ide in a, a real world implementation team great small startup kit but not something that goes all the way deep very rarely you will see a project being implemented on it all right but it is the same concept you need to understand this to master automation so whatever tests you you basically are creating in selenium ide they will be they can be recorded or you could start to write them itself team so you have both the options that you have either you can record them or you are trying to write them from very beginning and the way we are doing automation is multiple level id is what we're looking at and what we will get very very good into is identifying some of the commands that we work with and some of the targets as to how we identify that's a big progress team then comes web driver web driver is nothing but a bench of more commands that we can work directly with core java or c sharp or python we will get there in the next project team so it will be easy if you want to look at any of the web driver courses just go back to itlearn.com pick up any of the selenium training tutorials in that there are plenty of videos on web driver as to how we do primarily most important it should be your frameworks and how they are driven team now grid will come to later selenium ide so we were talking a lot about these three components right command target value one test case broken down into many steps each step is performed by the user with some intent in mind so computers have always been something called as input i output right we call that as io so what do this io do for us it gives us certain ability to put inputs or give get outputs from a machine how do we do that team always remember that for your system you have a keyboard all right you have a mouse and these are the two ways through which you're sending inputs to your computer and then what sometimes come up visually back in the system you're sending it back next steps and so on so these are the three inputs team so anything that you're doing on the screen is using the mouse or the keyboard or looking at the screen and sending it back that is how the basic interaction is and it will be the same for any automation tool it cannot change it will be the same for any artificial intelligent program as well that is how it's going to be what do it's it identify what can it work with so oops sorry so now when it comes to identifying these elements there are multiple ways team how does it all work let us look at an application so that we are not too confused about everything around i'm going to erase these drawings the first and foremost thing team any time an application does we need to look at is to look at the page source okay so the page source html page source gives us plenty of details about the app and that is what we need to tap into all right to identify very very important team 
any automation this is what it will take to identify an element or sometimes also called as an object on a website i need a few details all right so let's keep this as is and talk about identification team when before we get into a system trying to identify let's look at how humans identify how do we work with each other Can you hear me, team? Are you able to hear I, me? I joined into my sister phone for something wrong with my network audio. Is my audio okay for everyone? Great, sorry, thank you so much. A few of you left and are you rejoining? Something wrong with both of us not there. Team. So you can see my screen and I'm back, right, everyone? Is audio absolutely fine, team? Let me know if there's any disturbance because I put it into um, a speaker mode. All right, great. So let's continue. Uh, can you all see my screen? Not green though. My screen. Uh, why is my screen not coming?
can't see my screen, right, team? It's like basically dead at that section only. Nothing that I'm opening is showing up. For me, no two. Sorry team, give me a second. There's no internet. Why would it say no internet? Another machine. Now it's connected team to the other one. So give me a second. Maybe I should be able to join back. Okay, now you can see my screen, I guess. Let me change my audio to computer audio. Still audible? Still audible? Yes. yes. Great. All right, team. So we'll continue. Sorry about that. Had to change networks. So where were we? So if you look at a school, if you go to a school and you try to identify kids who are all wearing the same dress, it becomes tough, right? But you have very specific identification when a parent looks at a kid. The same thing happens, let us say you go to a parking lot, all right? So, and how do you identify your car among all the other cars? All right, so there's so many cars there. I'm trying to draw cars, team. <laughs> how do you identify them, okay? And then let us say, that you have um, a bunch of items, home items, okay? And you need to pick up a specific thing from it. There are different types of items everywhere. How do you identify and pick up? So what we do as usual as humans is we use visual identification, correct team? We visually try and look at something and see okay, if this is what we want or not. Uh, if it gets deeper, let us see, then after visual, then we might say, you know what, let's ch check with a number or something else to make sure it's all correct. So we have different types of options, visuals or numbers or names or email IDs and so on. When it comes to the world of web pages, it is pretty much simple. It wouldn't be that complex. So what do I mean? For web applications, when you look at an, any application, yes, the backend is in HTML. Okay, that is number one. So a lot of items can be identified because of the fact that they come as a HTML page. Now it could be a link. It could be a button that you can click on, or it could be a field that you will type something or a large uh, field of text box. It could be a radio button, it could be a check box, it could be a drop down that you have to select from. So this still becomes your application under test and it is all built on HTML. So the way it is done is every single object within it is identified uniquely by using certain properties, okay? So within HTML, we're calling all of these as elements. And these elements are all within the application. So if I look at, for example, login 
and out here if i right click here and go to inspect or actually we even before inspect where's the page source okay view page source is that let's do that view page source it'll give me the entire html code of this application what happened yes there are some dynamic fields like data gets populated from certain sections or when you submit a form of username and password certain things happen so for humanly for us to go through this code is very tough thing it takes us a lot of time what element identification uh, does is when we are talking about identifying a specific element then we say we will put it into the target with those fields so how do we identify the element team so very simple it all starts with where am i html source for the entire for the application under test and then what we do is inspect element and get its html code all right now team in itlearn.com there are plenty of videos on html programming the basics i would want you to go in and try and take a look team at it um, online courses then you have online courses you have ms office basics web basics html and so on a little bit on digital branding and marketing too but definitely watch this web basics and html team gives you an edge as to what they do nothing complex on it all right so you're going to inspect the element and get its html code what do i mean by it okay first and foremost thing team the any tool is going to break this application down into smaller pieces i will never work on the application wholly at the same time i only take certain piece at a time and then work on the application all right so let us look at any of these team as we go along all right but i'm not going to focus on the first few i will start with a field something like a username here okay so you see the username field here team let's focus on this for a section i'm going to close this what i opened and try and understand what is there <clears throat> it's very simple team one of my steps requires me to enter that information here on demo at anyot.com all right if i need to enter that username out here how would i do it and what would i enter for the password correct all this data i can provide but first i need to identify that element how does it know that username is here and that it is not here so the first and foremost thing is we will right click on that field and say inspect when we say inspect it is going to take me to that specific section in the code when i said view the html source or view the source for this page it showed me the entire thing team which is not easy for us to search through and find where those elements are every browser these days comes with this option on a web page when you right click it will say it will give you an option called inspect inspect is a feature that you will see very very uh, prevalent team where we will get detailed into that specific element code so when i say inspect the specific element right click on it and say inspect it is going to take me to the html code overall but highlight the one which is of importance okay so here if i'm going in and changing all right anything that i want it will reflect directly on this field so these two are linked here is the ui presentation here is the source code for it so out here i'm going to right click on this code and click on copy outer html team okay you will see a lot of tools a lot of options like copying javascript path x path selector copy element just start with outer html always do not ever do anything else once you get that outer html put it up here all right 
Now, this is the detail of how an element HTML code might look at the back end. Sometimes more, sometimes less, but typically how it is. For this, for us to understand this, we need to understand how does a HTML code look. Okay, HTML code, HTML elements and tags. All right. Now, every HTML element okay, starts with tag name and ends with tag name. So basically, when I want to write HTML code for my application to understand, all I do is I say tag name and then blah, 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 whatever I want, I can write. And the end of it, another tag name. This is how it is typically identified. Now, some of these elements don't need a beginning and an end. See, if you see div and all of this, they will have a starting, they'll have an end. Input is one of the HTML tags team. In this case, what we have is this, okay? Now, there are three, um, how do I say, the three <laughs> parts to HTML code, okay? First is the HTML tag team, okay? The word, starting right after the less than symbol. So in our case, what would it be team then? If you look at the HTML code that we got, what would it then be? So whatever follows precedes the left uh, less than symbol will be that. In this case, it is input, all right? What it does team, it tells the type of object that is very critical and we'll discuss about object and object types briefly we'll go a little deeper tomorrow team the second becomes element attribute name let me write the whole thing and the third one comes attribute value all right so before we understand this in an HTML perspective, let us go back to the diagram that I created where we're talking about different objects and how we work with them. Okay, so you see school and how we identify kids when we watch them, maybe we're not looking at the uniform. What are we then looking at? We're looking at the hair color, maybe the height, maybe the shoulder width, maybe the backpack that they're carrying, or they get closer, they're looking at the facial recognitions and hence they're able to identify. So in a school to identify, oops, kids. Okay, kids, we are seeing hair, height, body, shape, as we get closer face to differentiate from others, other kids, correct? That is what we have to do. Now, when it comes to the next example of cars, all right? Now, what happens in cars? It can be a color of a car that I can tell you, hey, mine is a red car there. It can be a make, a model sometimes, we can use, as it gets closer, a vehicle identification number or a license plate number and so on. Sometimes I can also say the fourth car in second row on third floor, right? You could give some specific or spot number 55. Here is how you're able to identify a car or something within a car not something within a car, he's how we identifying a car itself. So this entire concept boils down to the main thing about programming called as OOPS team. What happens in OOPS, object-oriented programming systems, and how do we go about creating that and showing that in the regular world? So we're gonna talk a little bit about that.
few more minutes team and then we'll continue tomorrow all right <clears throat> so in real world team everything is an object that we see around us but we know these objects belong to a specific type let us say if i have five cell phones at home or let us say I have three laptops there are three laptops how do i differentiate each of them maybe the make the model the size the color and so on correct now but all these three cell phones are basically same things i cannot compare a cell phone with a car but i can compare one cell phone to the other i can compare one television to the other if i have multiple so all of these objects basically come from a concept called as a class a class is like a blueprint team okay this is like a blueprint or a skeleton okay it will tell you that objects in this class only have to behave like that so what is a class for example cars are a class okay your mobile phones are a class your elements on the application under test could belong to a class then what is an object my car a specific representation from that generic thing saying that okay all cars have to have four wheels or four doors the blueprint when we take a specific product and create a version of it my car it will always have similarities to its parent as to what does my car look like it will all be the same i can have one more car i'll say this is my second car and these two cars are different but they both belong to my same class and that's my car class so you have your class and you have objects that you can create so the same thing with cell phones cell phones all belong to or mobile phones belong to a class but i will tell them that hey you know what in the cell phone there is my phone there is your phone there is an iphone there is an android and so on subtle differences among them but basic is the same so i may not be able to compare a car and a mobile but i will always compare a mobile to a mobile so what that means in a simpler diagram team and this is a very very critical concept oops when we started delving into the concept of programming i'm not talking about software testing here i'm even talking about programming itself okay when we started doing the initial coding then we realized that these codes are all great to put together but when it comes to identifying and working and trying to mimic the real world there's only one way and to do it in an object oriented programming system see it is saying object oriented so our orientation our thought the way we want to think is more towards objects we want to look at objects and talk accordingly so to put that back into coding or anything they basically said here is how object oriented programming system works how does it work let's say you basically have a class oops i selected a better color you have a class from a class you can take an object and each object has two things team all right it has a set of properties that describe it or identify it okay so there are two here one is to describe and the other is to identify and there are actions or methods as to what it can do all right now any object you can classify and put them in that okay so if i say a car my car what are the properties of my car i will say color make model weight how many seater engine capacity endless right 
what can my car do my car can travel it can go forward it can go backward it can turn left it can turn right i can lock it i can unlock it so there's so many things i can do on a car same thing as to what you can do on a cell phone you can speak on a cell phone you can add a contact to it you can watch a video on it and if you look at it the same things that you can do so what you do on a car okay very significantly from what you can do on a cell phone all right you have a smartphone it does something very different how do you then know so for each class you have these properties and you have the specific methods or actions an object is nothing but a blueprint so if i have a template i'm taking and creating an object out of the template it will always follow that am i being clear everyone do you understand the basic concept of what is object oriented it is the way of us looking at everything in the world as objects and translating that into programming how do we translate that into testing also becomes important do you have any questions on what i was speaking please <clears throat> team any questions i see a few of you are not attentive you switch screens like sumoita mark and that's fine we're still at the uh, preliminary but this is the main concepts team no questions okay great so now and team please always feel free to put your questions on chat you're always welcome to um, unmute and be able to speak to so team html tag now becomes a type of an object what do i mean in a html code team if this means input you actually can input something it's a type of an object now this could be a link or a button so if i say inspect and I go here, see the type of the object is button. This could be an image if I inspect and see it will be IMG. And this is another image. Inspect, see IMG in the source code. One second. Sorry, team. So, these details give us the clarity of what these elements are so almost all edit fields may look similar because of the stylings that we give and so on but there could be one or two things different let us say the two work white mercedes besides each other now both are marks and the besides each other they're almost the same thing then what is it you either your remote controls or your license plate which will differentiate right especially if you go to a shop showroom lot there's so many same thing here some attribute will be different now so the H tag name basically tells me the type of object attribute name is a property used to define or identify an object slash element all right so oops we've spoken about now we're talking element oriented programming system as the same exact complex then comes the attribute value what is the value for that attribute then comes as to fourth one action to perform on the element once we understand this team then you can start writing code in java and web driver like a cake it's a piece of cake to be able to get in there now um what is this attribute name and value team this is like a pair when you look at this input okay so let's lay, take this html code and re-look at it in a better way let's make it simpler i'm going to put this ding 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 okay control now see this is my start and this is my end team for my html tag okay start is here and end is here after input everything that i'm seeing i'm taking it into a new line team <clears throat> 
okay there we go the same html element now presented a little bit more vertically okay in the html code if you look at it it is horizontal you have to scroll through and go through to be able to identify but here it's vertically represented why did i do that for your clarity for our clarity even if i want to do it on a project that i work on i would want to do it this way why are we doing it this way team uh, i hope this is recording right yes great why are we doing it this way now after your HTML tag, everything that you see here is an attribute name on the left side team. Okay, before the equal to symbol. On the right side in the double quotes is the value for that attribute. Let us say car color is so and so, car brand is so and so, car engine. I'm sorry, one second. Sorry, team. All right. So, car engine is one uh, one kind of capacity, and so on. All this is how it is broken down. So, rule number one in element identification. So, I told you remember ways of identifying elements. Okay. Now, it, unlike humans, computers have a different speed ethic in terms of the fast. They're not like okay, how quickly they take a certain action. In this case, if you look at if there is an element with the ID or name unique enough, then we can use it directly. So here I'm saying ID is username name equals login underscore username. These two could be a good option. How do I check open that application open selenium IDE go to a step maybe here. And if you see this, my target is already ID equals username. It has not given anything in quotes, but it is enough for it to understand that ID is username. So if I put my ID to one side and my browser application address to the other side, and out here in the target, okay, it is giving me the other options also that are there. But what I'm interested in looking at, select the target in the page. When I click on this option, you will see that that specific element will get highlighted. What is it highlighting? Select an element. Okay. Uh, ting, ting, ting. So this is ID equals username. Find target in page. There you go. Sorry. The select target in page is to select the uh, thing. <coughs> Oopsie. Control C. Undo, where is undo? <laughs> There's no undo also. It basically got me something here. I'll do it. Select target in page and I'll select this. It'll take it back. Okay. So we are saying find target in page. That is the option we're using. When I click that, you will for a moment notice the demo at anyot.com blinking team. Okay. Now if you go and try and do the same for the password field. It is doing that. How? Because using the ID attribute, it is able to recognize it directly. Does it blink? It is doing something not very clearly visible for a very quick fraction. It is showing me in the screen, right? And that is how it's identifying. Now, how about the sign in button? So somewhere there should be a click, right? So click single button could be this. I'm not sure. I'm going to say find target in page. And yes, it is able to highlight that object. Um, maybe you're not able to see it at your end team, but I am able to repeat the same steps at your end team. Try and replicate them. Play around with the application with Selenium ID. Get going with it. Whatever we did it in from day one to day three, I want you to repeat the same thing, please. Team, another two, three, five minutes if you're okay, and then I'll end today's session, please. All right. So now you see how it is automatically identified here. So the rule is very simple. If there is ID or name or link text, take it as is. Okay. Or comes the X path way of doing it. How to write absolute and relative X paths. Okay. And how do we? This is a must have skill team. Because I see people 
still using tools depending on Selenium ID, Ketalon, or other third party plugins to identify elements. Come on, guys, that is not agreeable. You have to be very clear and happy about one simple thing. It is easiest to uh, do it at your end. You have to be in total control. Don't depend so much on to one application, please, or a tool which will help you. This is one skill you must acquire. That is how to identify elements. So this I'm going to teach you in extents tomorrow. How do we generate these X paths? If you then look at QTP descriptive programming or HP UTFT descriptive programming uh, or look at um, other tools like any or, or kettle on, you will see the same concepts going on too. Great team, so that's it for my side for today. A little bit more in depth. Tomorrow we'll be able to finish about identifying elements. That'll be day four. We'll write a few more tests on it. And day six, I think we're ready for our catalog. Any questions, please? Any questions regarding the program, training, membership, in and out, JPAC, anything? Team, I have a few more minutes, so please. Be active, show some energy, have questions. This is a great option, great time, please. Can you all confirm if you're there? Team. So here is the plan, all right? So we're gonna go with uh, finishing Selenium ID the way we are. We will do a little bit of element identification. We'll record a few more tests, but we'll write a lot more tests. We will see how we can take this code into a different structure if we can write a few more tests on Selenium ID itself. Then we'll go into Catalan Studio. How does it work differently? How does this tool look? How does it behave differently? Let us understand that. That will be much faster for us to understand. So you'll get a great overview of all these tools at an initial level team. Any questions, please? I'm assuming none so far. Feel free to reach out to me if there are any questions. Uh, I have, I do have one poll team. I don't know how many of you uh, here are part of it. Are you already a member or not is the only question team. So I'm just launching a poll to you at your end. Can you please take a minute and address it? And then you can exit team. I'm just gonna share it with all as well. How many of you are already existing members and how many of you are not? Because there's a lot of renewals that is happening. New, new members are gonna be joining in. Just wanna be able to split it in. Great, so team, I'm gonna see you all tomorrow, uh, same time. Sorry for the delay today. It was so pathetic in terms of all this infrastructure. Sometimes things just grow loose, uh, but I could get the class in. Uh, we'll continue tomorrow. Thank you so much for your patience. All right, great team. So almost 80% of you are already members, great. So for the remaining 17, 18% of you, just sharing this as well. For not yet members, uh, please don't uh, worry about it. Take your sessions, uh, go through it, Make sure that this is the right program for you as one center and we can go on. The one thing that I definitely want to bring up team is the fact that when we talk about IT learn, we specialize a lot on hands-on training and project work. So our products and what we do at Varkasa.com and Enion.com speak a lot. A lot of projects are coming our way. So I want you to get to know that it is one membership that is giving you access to everything. All right, so what happened to IT learn? Something is pressed, definitely I'll, <laughs> okay. IT learn, not free webinars. I'm just going to the main page. So that's one membership that is getting you access to all these courses, all right? And it is taking you to the next one as well, uh, in terms of live and so on. Great, that's it for my side for now, team. Thank you so much. We'll see you all back tomorrow then, 6.30 p.m. Pacific. When we start manual testing, sure team, I'm not getting too many inquiries for manual testing, just three or four members. And that's why we are unable to kind of finalize it. Uh, but why can you go through one of the older manual testing programs, please, on the website? Oh, I was showing it on a different machine, sorry. So if you go to itln.com and 
here under online courses, there are a lot of these. So either in your certified tester or just take, where is the manual testing? Uh, ding, 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 ding. <clears throat> so QA or manual testing fundamentals is there. There's ALM also, all of these. Pick up an old batch. And the way to learn through IT learn team is learn them like you learn, like you watch Netflix. Don't try and pause too much, rewind too much, repeat it. Just keep letting it play. And while it is playing, you can take notes, team. So there's a, there was an April batch, there's an August last year, June last year, March last year. So a lot of batches, team, all the way since 2015. Pick one of them and start going through immediately. All right. Any of these last batches will have a lot of content end to end. All right, team. Thank you so much. Then see you all tomorrow. Bye now. Thank you, everyone. Bye.